Now let's discuss question number 64. It states that in the given figure, ABCD is a kite in which AB is equal to AD and O is midpoint of EG and FH. The quadrilateral EFGH is always A. We have four options as square, rhombus, parallelogram and rectangle. So in this figure, it is given that here ABCD will be a kite where I have AB equal to AD. So that means BC will be definitely equal to CD. And as you are quite aware, in a kite, both the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. These diagonals are intersecting at point O, they will be definitely perpendicular to each other at point O. Moreover, O is provided as midpoint of FH. So here FO is equal to OH and here O is also midpoint of EG. That means EO will be equal to OG. So when we specifically talk about this quadrilateral EHGF or EFGH, in this case you can see we have two diagonals EG and FH. These two diagonals are bisecting each other at point O which is quite clear from the given condition provided in this question and they are perpendicular to each other. Now which is a quadrilateral where the diagonals bisect each other? That is a parallelogram. And when the diagonals bisect each other as well as they are perpendicular to each other, that means that parallelogram is a rhombus. So here in this case, EFGH represents a quadrilateral which is a rhombus, which is clearly here option number two, the correct answer for this question. I hope it is clear. Let's proceed to our next question. Now let's discuss question number 65. It states that Amit gives a person discount on selling a TV whose mark price is rupees B. If he gets C percent profit on this, then its cost price would be in rupees out of these four options. So here basically Amit is firstly providing discount of A percent on the mark price of the article, which is marked at rupees B. So you can definitely obtain the selling price. Using the discount and the mark price, selling price is equal to 100 minus discount percent, which is A in this case, upon 100 into mark price, which is B. So this is the selling price using the discount and the mark price. Then it is being stated he gets C percent profit on this. Using the profit percentage also, you can obtain the cost price. So here the selling price using the profit percent will be 100 plus profit percent, which is C, upon 100 into cost price. So both of these give the selling price of the same article so they can be easily equated. When you will be equating here 100 minus A upon 100 into B with 100 plus C upon 100 into cost price on transposing this whole bracket to the right hand side or the left hand side you obtain here the cost price and in this case cost price can be easily obtained as here 100, 100 gets cancelled it will be equal to b into 100 minus a upon 100 plus c so this is the required value of the cost price on basis of the discount mark price and the profit percentage so out of these four options i can clearly see that option number four gives me the correct answer so here the answer for this question is option number four I hope it is clear. Let's proceed to our next question. Let's discuss question number 66. It states that a sum becomes rupees 4800 after 2 years and rupees 6400 after 4 years at compound interest per annum compounded annually. Then the sum is out of these 4 options. So here let's consider that the sum is P, the principal is P, the rate of interest is R. So on basis of that, it becomes 4800 after 2 years, we get that amount will be equal to principal into 1 plus rate upon 100 raised to the power 2 for 2 years. This is amounting to rupees 4800. Let this one be equation number 1. And on basis of the second condition that it becomes 6400 after 4 years, we get the equation of the amount as P into 1 plus R upon 100 raised to the power 4 is equal to 6400. Let this be equation number 2. Now let's divide equation number 2 by equation number 1. On doing that, you will obtain here P into 1 plus R upon 100 raised to the power 4 upon P into 1 plus R upon 100 raised to the power 2 equal to 6400 upon 4800. So let's simplify this one. You can clearly find that in this case these two zeros get cancelled and here PP gets cancelled and this simplifies to 1 plus R raised to the power 2. 
that means here I am getting the value that I have 1 plus r upon 100 raised to the power 2 equal to 64 upon 48. Now this value could be easily substituted in equation number 1. From equation number 1, I can clearly get that p into 1 plus r upon 100 raised to the power 2 was equal to 4800. So this value could be easily substituted as 64 upon 48 equal to 4800. So when you will be solving this equation, this will help you out to get the value of p and the principal will come out to be rupees 3600 in this case. So this is a very basic application of the compound interest. So here out of these four options, I can clearly say that the sum is rupees 3600, which is option number two, the correct answer for this question. I hope it is clear. Let's proceed to our next question.